Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are gonna be checking out the all new Raspberry Pi OS Bullseye. So let's get started. Now, as of a couple of days ago, you can now download and upgrade your Raspberry Pi to the latest Debian installment, which is Bullseye. Now, there's a lot of updates that happen in the background and in the front end of the Raspberry Pi OS. And that's why it actually took a little bit longer than usual to come out with the new desktop. But one of the biggest things to mention is that they now stepped up the CPU speed for the newer Raspberry Pi board. The ones with these three little chips next to the HDMI. Any Raspberry Pi with that, will now have the 1.8 gigahertz versus the 1.5. Now, it doesn't mean that the older boards like the ones I have cannot go up to 1.8. We obviously have tested that and blown out the waters where it could go even up to 1.3. But yes, you can manually adjust the arm frequency to 1.8 and you should still be able to get that speed. But the newer boards with those little three things will just automatically get that. Now I will be testing this on a Raspberry Pi 400, which is already 1.8 gigahertz and it has four gigs of RAM. Now also, as far as the back end goes, they did change some stuff with printing. They did change some stuff with the camera. They're now using lib camera instead. And a few other things with software updates, obviously because of Bullseye. So the back end wise, the major change was the CPU. Now, as far as the front end wise, you will see a noticeable change on Raspberry Pi 2 gigs and above because they are now using Mutter instead of OpenBox. So you're gonna get a new desktop experience, especially once we jump into it, you're gonna see what a change it has been. And they also went from GTK2 to GTK3, which is huge because that's mostly what I modify my skins with. So I'm gonna be able to do a lot more theming on the Raspberry Pi OS because they switched to a much more modern GTK. Anyway. Let's jump into a desktop, check out what we're talking about. When you do install this first time, what scared me the most is that menu. There was a robotic voice that came out like this. To install the screen reader, press Control Alt Space. And that scared the crap out of me because I didn't know that that was gonna happen. It's just basically saying, do you wanna install a screen reader? Just press these combination. Anyway, going through the beginning, what I also noticed is now instead of UK, it actually says United States. So somehow it might be picking up my location or they changed the default to United States instead of UK. And then that's it. The installation is the same, the uh, first menu. Now they did change the wallpaper over here, which is pretty cool. I mean, um, I wasn't never really a huge fan of their wallpapers. It's just, it's all right, they change it, that's cool. But let's go into the changes. First, you're gonna notice if I was to open File Manager, do you see that come up? That is now animation. We have now animation and drop shadow. So you can see a little bit of the drop shadow on the top left over here. That's because we're using Mutter now, which is a window compositor. Like it handles all the windows. We also get the curved menus up on top. We had it before, but it wasn't our elegant way of doing it. Mutter now does it in-house, so it's a little bit better. Now, the only downside of using Mutter compared to OpenBox is that it does take a little bit more resources because it has to generate the frames in the memory. So uh, upside is we do get a more modern desktop. Downside is it's gonna use a little bit more memory. Now, before I open any more applications, I'm gonna jump into Task Manager. And you're gonna see um, it's relatively pretty fresh to the boot. And you're gonna get right around 160, 167 megabytes of RAM on fresh boot, which is still very, very low, but um, it could be a little bit lower with open box. And I'm very happy with 167 megs of RAM being used and you get a full desktop like this. Every time if you've seen me do a complete overhaul on a desktop, first thing I do is get rid of the open box window manager and change it out for PyCom or Mutter just so I could get the drop shadows. And now since it's default, I don't have to worry about it. I'm gonna hide this uh, tax manager because I'm not really gonna worry about looking at it. Um, okay, file manager. One of the things they did change is this icon. You're gonna notice that this used to have four icons, I believe, and now they switched it down to two. This way it's less confusing because they had like icon mode, um, list mode, and some other modes. But yeah, now they switched it down to two. And if you want to be able to zoom in and zoom out, oh yeah, thumbnail mode. That's what they got rid of. But now you could do it here. Uh, if you want to zoom in and zoom out, you could just go in here and it'll make the icons bigger, smaller. They switched it out for that. So there's less clutter up here and more room to just have the original buttons. Um, closing that out, you see that animation, it now closes out. Uh, next thing they have added is the appearance setting. 
Now they actually added tabs to the appearance setting that you could change the menu bar system and defaults. Also, you could get rid of your waste bin or pop it back in. Or if you have documents, you could actually have that folder come up as well. And mounted disk if you want to see them on the desktop or not. What's also cool, they have notifications now. So notifications now pop up due to Mutter and it has this really pretty frame on the uh, top right and even includes updates as well. Once you click on that update icon over here, show updates, it has a new menu where you could download and install newer updates. This actually gets refreshed every time you reboot the system and it'll run the update manager just to see if there's something new. I'm not going to update it right now, but yes, this menu does come up now and you could just click install and get the latest updates. That's one of the things that they include also into the notification so you could see that pop up. And if you wanted to not have the notification pop up, you could always uh, disable the notifications. I'm going to take this disc out so I don't have to see it on my desktop. And there you go. That also has another menu. Now moving on, if I was to right click onto a taskbar and go into panel settings, you're also going to notice there's a couple of tabs. But one of the tabs, if you go over to appearance, this is where you can enable or disable notifications on the top right. Or you could change the timeout from 15 seconds to whatever you want. Another thing that they did add, which I know a lot of you don't check out, but it is in here, called the bookshelf. In the bookshelf itself, they have the PyMag, some books and stuff like that. But what they did add recently was custom PC. So if you are into reading magazines about computers, how to build them, whatever, etc., etc., custom PCs is now on their bookshelf app and you get all the magazines for free. So if you have time and you're checking out the operating system and you want to read a book or magazine, uh, here you go. You could actually download the PDF from here and read it directly off the Raspberry Pi. Man, I can't get enough of that. The, the animations on this make this so modern. Look at this. If I go over to the top and I'm just highlighting it, you see the, you'll see the fade in. Yeah, just those little subtle things that they add in. Also, they updated the Chromium browser. So now it's using version 92 with more implementations with the hardware acceleration for the graphic card. So it should be able to play uh, YouTube videos and everything a lot better than it was before. Well, not a lot, just better. Also, if you haven't seen my video on the Raspberry Pi Zero 2, I am gonna I am doing some projects with this right now, uh, testing out the operating systems that are coming out. So I will have more videos on the Zero 2 soon. But for now, if you haven't seen the original video, I do have a link to that on the top left. All in all, just to conclude, uh, this is a new operating system. I feel it's very responsive and it's not using much more RAM than it was before. And you get the better appearance out of it. Uh, there are, like I said, the subtle things that they changed in the background, uh, software being updated, the overclocking, or now the stock clock is 1.8. Those are great stuff to be added into the new Raspberry Pi. You're just basically getting like a free upgrade. Uh, the appearance settings like Mutter and GTK3, those are huge improvements on the Raspberry Pi. And I will be doing uh, more videos on theming because now on GTK3, there's a lot more options that opened up. If you guys are interested in seeing how to upgrade from... Uh, Buster to Bozai. Let me know down in the comments below if you want to see that video. Uh, honestly, I'm not too interested in it because I'm just I usually just do a wipe and then install the latest operating system. But if you guys are stuck on Buster and need to upgrade without potentially damaging everything, uh, let me know down in the comments below. I can make a quick video on doing that. Anyway, that is it for me. If you guys have any questions about this, hit it down in the comments below. Hope you guys enjoyed this little video and hope you guys test it out because there's a lot of new things that are coming. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.